talking about olivin cross metathesis. We're going to be talking about a special type of metathesis called ethanolysis, which includes two reactants that both have terminal alkenes. Notice how the numbering is different from IUPAC here to make the reaction seem more simple. Three is the terminal carbon here. And four is the terminal carbon here. Now this reaction won't take place until we have the, the Grubbs, Grubbs catalyst. catalyst. Notice how the product formed here is in the E configuration. Also notice that the terminal alkenes, uh, the terminal carbons on the reactant alkenes were 3 and 4, and they're now 3 and 4 in the product ethene, which is very useful because now in the solution, when you boil it, it will boil away. And then you have the Grubbs catalyst reformed. In this example, we have an acetyl protecting group and a terminal alkene with the carbon numbered 4. And in this reactant, we have, a we have a terminal alkene with a carbon numbered 5. And in the presence of the Grubbs catalyst, the product here is made, and it's in the configuration E. <laughs> and also, as you can see, this reaction is fundamentally the same as the one before that we showed you, and that the terminal carbons of the alkenes in the reactant, uh, 4 and 5, are now in the ethene, which again, boils away, and we have a reformation of the Grubbs catalyst. Here we have a general mechanism for ethenolysis by olefin cross metathesis. Now, what you do here is the Grubbs catalyst and the first reactant, or it could be the second reactant, depending on our choosing, will form a four-membered ring, donating electrons to create bonds here and here, as noted by what we have here. And what ha what will happen here is the electrons will shift, and double bonds will be formed, new ones, and you'd have the ethene molecule here as a byproduct, as well as your Grubbs catalyst attached to your first reactant with its corresponding R group. And we have the formation of bonds in between these complexes, these reactants, where the double bond, one of the bonds, shifts here, shifts its electrons in between, and these electrons shift in between the, uh, the carbons bound to the R groups and forming this transition state. And it, it, it comes before our four-membered ring intermediate, which is denoted here. And it also note what's given here, which is the setup for our products being in the E configuration with the R groups opposing and ending in this configuration once the electrons move. So once the electrons move in the pattern denoted here, what you'll see is this will form your electrons between your first reactant and your Grubbs catalyst will be kicked off forming this double bond and your uh, your electrons here will be kicked off and form this double bond here. And notice the regeneration of the catalyst. So as we've seen from the previous reactions before, this reaction functions as a very convenient synthetic technique in organic chemistry. Once again, via a specific catalyst, its result is a redistribution of the R groups into olefins. More specifically, it will replace one side of the olefins R groups with another's. This reaction is very useful because it can retain and control the stereochemistry using different protecting groups on the olefins. However, it is always much more uncommon to find a reaction that creates a Z isomer. E is usually preferred in cross metathesis. Also, depending on these protecting groups and functional groups that are on the olefins, different variations of catalysts are used to control the cross metathesis selectivity. So there are many types of catalysts that could do the olefin metathesis that we talked about today. Um, the first one that was created was the Schrock catalyst um, in 1990, uh, synthesized by Richard Schrock. Um, it does not show very, um, very high activity, or, and it's very reactive with the environment, like water and air, so it had to be perfected. Um, Grubbs came along with Schrock and created the Grubbs, um, the first generation Grubbs catalyst in 1992. This is the catalyst that he won the Nobel Prize for. Um, 
it's very much more active and much less reactive with the environment, but it's still pretty reactive with the environment. So um, the, grub, the second generation Grubs Catalyst was created. Um, it's now the catalyst of choice for those who want to do achiral um, reactions. Um, but for those who want to do chiral, there's the um, first and second generation Hodeva Grubs Catalyst. Um, the first one, um, it was their first one synthesized. Um, it's not very enantioselective, selective, so the second um, generation was created. Um, both um, work in a similar fashion to the Grubbs Callus, but because of um, a chiral grouping, um, it gives enantioselectivity selectivity to the reactions. Now that we've gone over the mechanism and some fundamental examples, let's put it together. We'll start off with our first R group and react it with our Grubbs catalyst to get the first squared intermediate, which will then collapse on itself and result in an ethene and an olefin with the first R group and our catalyst. Notice how the ethene can boil away, and this will drive the reaction forward. Once we react it with our second R group, we will get our second uh, squared intermediate, which also collapses and returns our catalyst, as well as our new R group. Notice the E configuration.